50 meters, constant velocity, 37 meters, 30 meters, 20 meters, 17 meters, standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. <laughs> Last Monday, the InSight lander became the eighth successful robotic mission to land on the surface of Mars. Now with that being said, in this video we're going to discuss what has happened since the landing. What have we learned about its area around it? What photographs have we received from InSight? And also, what went right with the landing sequence? What major breakthroughs did we have? Let's talk about that. So let's start off with the landing sequence, and we actually knew that it was going well as it was happening, or at least seven minutes later because of light traveling from Mars, but in that sense what was actually happening was InSight was directly relaying its information with two CubeSats named Marco A and Marco B. Now these CubeSats were technology demonstrators to help us understand how well we could use these when trying to land on another planet or another moon. And this is important because this shows in the future we can send these relatively cheap satellites to to give us more information about the landing sequence and live data feed when it's actually happening. Now because of this, as soon as the parachutes were deployed, the Marco satellites were able to tell us when the heat shield was dropped and the rover successfully landed, all these things came directly from Marco A and Marco B. Now unfortunately, Marco A and Marco B are in a flyby of Mars, they're not entering an orbit, therefore they're not going to be able to send more information anymore. In fact, at this point, they're no longer usable, but we did receive a few images from the two as they were approaching and leaving the planet Mars, as you see now. So what has happened since the landing? Actually a lot of very important things. The very first one being it pinged to NASA saying, hey, I'm alive. And this is important because if Marco A and Marco B didn't function as expected, then this would have been the only way we would have known, or at least the first way we would have known that InSight landed successfully. Then quickly after that, we received the very first picture from Mars, as you see now. And you can tell that the camera has a lot of dust particles on it, and it's not very clean, which is like, okay, there's no one there to clean it off. However, now NASA did say it's a transparent lens cap that would only be put on there for the landing sequence and would later be taken off. So then a few hours later, InSight was able to relay some information with a real communication satellite orbiting around Mars and we were able to get this picture which shows a much more cleaner and better environment that InSight was in. In fact, you can see some of the experiments and InSight's actual arm in this picture. Now about five hours after InSight successfully landed on Mars, NASA received confirmation that both of InSight's 2.2 meter solar panels were deployed successfully. Now this was really important because InSight is solely ran off of solar power. Therefore, if they weren't able to deploy, then the mission would be dead within a few weeks. But fortunately, they both deployed and InSight is fine on the surface. Now with that being said, these solar panels only provide around 600 to 700 watts, which is enough to power about a blender, which isn't a lot of energy, but NASA knows what they're doing and they're able to manage their power successfully for all their instruments and keeping everything warm to function properly. So what does NASA have planned in the nearby future for the InSight lander? And the first thing we have to realize is two of the main experiments on InSight have to be placed directly on the surface of Mars because it's trying to understand its inner structure. Therefore, it's going to take some images of the nearby area or what InSight's able to reach to and deduce where the best place to put these two experiments are on the surface. Then in the meantime, InSight's going to do various health checks to make sure that everything's working properly on the lander, and it's also going to be checking the temperature and other things that it's able to do directly from the lander itself. So we won't be getting a lot of actual scientific data until maybe January or February of next year, and this is because it'll take a few months to actually place these experiments directly on the surface. Now with all that being said, the InSight lander is expected to last for about two years, but knowing most NASA missions that go to Mars, usually they last for as long as we're able to communicate with them. For example, the Phoenix lander, the mission lasted until we lost communication, the Spirit rover lasted until we lost communication, and Opportunity, uh, I don't know, hopefully we hear back from Opportunity and we don't have to cancel that one too. But we'll see in the future. Now something to look forward to with InSight over the next few weeks are images we'll be receiving from the lander showcasing the 
area around it and some of which might even be in 3D, which will give us a better understanding of where exactly we want to place the experiments on board InSight. But speaking of these experiments, over the next week or so, I'm going to be releasing three videos that are going to be going in depth about the actual experiments themselves, how they function, and what we plan on getting out of the information that we learn from them. But with all that being said, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.